Good morning, Hope Church. You're most welcome. Brothers and sisters of Hope Church, we miss you. We love you. And we long to be together at some point. If you're joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you too. I want to say you're most welcome. And I want to bless you. And I hope you will be blessed through this service. I want to open with a verse. And it says here in 1 John 3, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. God has made everything possible for us because of Jesus Christ. The, the, the relationship with Him is restored if you put our trust in Him. He goes beyond that. Not only He calls us children, He wants to be our Father. It says in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, And I will be, there, I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. This is the Lord of the universe that goes beyond any ruler on this earth, that is stronger, that is mighty, and yet he keeps everything under control. And for the ones who love him, for the ones who put the trust in him, today we're going to celebrate that he is our father and that we are there, his children, that you are a daughter or maybe you're a son. And I want to just tell you this. Let's celebrate for uh, uh, Jesus this morning. Because because of him, this relationship, father, son, and daughter, is restored. And I'm delighted. Because in that, the Lord uh, 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 blesses us. But he also corrects us in a relationship. He also restores us. And he makes us grow and to become more like him. And I just want to celebrate with you this morning because I have a father in heaven that never fails. He is trustworthy. He knows me. He loves me. And he loves you and he knows you. Let's pray and let's celebrate this this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, that uh, we are coming together, that we are, it's, we are, it's possible for us to come together online, Lord. Uh, rather than not getting together. Lord, we look forward, Lord, to the day that we can meet, meet physically again. But for now, Lord, I pray, Lord, will you speak through us through this medium, which is the internet, Lord. Will you speak, Father, through the preacher that is going to preach to us, Lord. Will you also speak, Father, to the worship, Lord. Lord, will you speak, Father, to the comments that we make to one another, that we will be uplifting, that we will be encouraging one another, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, we need you. Lord, come and be part of this service online this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you.
to present to you guys again another kids service so if you're on YouTube the link in the description or if you're on Facebook it's up above we have the link to our kids Sunday service and it's awesome there's lots of fun games dancing I'm sorry adults that you can't be a part of it because it's super duper amazing but yeah so if you're a kid go take your parents phone go click in the link in the description and we'll have some fun of our own so yeah adults go enjoy your preaching while kids come with me See you guys later! Good morning church. Welcome to Hope Church Online Service, Hope From Home. I believe you are blessed by that worship session. Now I go into the world. And I believe the Lord is going to bless us through the world as well. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to connect with one another and to worship you. Thank you for what you have planned for us this day. As we go into your word, we pray, Lord, that you teach us, you open our mind to receive what you have for us this day, and in turn, your people will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're welcome once again. We thank God for this opportunity for us to tune in and connect with one another and worship and Receive what the Lord has for us. If this is your first time of tuning in, you are welcome. This is Hope Church Online Service. This morning I have a word I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to share with us. You see, we are living in a very difficult times. You know, from all the signs we are seeing in line with the scriptures, we say we are living in the end time. And also we are living at a time that humanity has been presented with so much things to choose from. So much... Uh, options are there both good and bad and you see because the lord has created us with that freedom of choice he gives us choice in everything he is not imposing himself on us he, he his invitation is left for us to choose to respond to or not even this morning tuning in you made a choice to tune in so we understand that as human beings we are giving choices and especially now the choices are bound. But the question is, what choices are you making? What are you going to choose when the options are presented to you? I'll be speaking to us on the topic, choose life. Choose life. Right from the creation in, uh, in the book of Genesis, the scripture made us to understand that God created everything before he created man. And when he created man, he gave him uh, he blessed man and gave him the freedom to choose, you know, out of the trees of the garden, which one to eat. But he told him one at the center that he should not eat. But he, interestingly, there was also a tree of life in that garden that if man have chosen to eat the tree of life, man would live perpetually and would not die. But rather, through the deception of the devil, man chose to eat the fruit the very one that we, that they were asked not to eat and you see the same thing has been repeating all through uh, uh, the, the the generation of men options are presented but how many how, how many times have we chosen to make the right choices so this morning we'll be looking at the book of um, Deuteronomy to dig into this topic. You see, in Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 11 to 20 we'll be reading, we see here, you know, these are one of the last words of Moses to the people of Israel that he left out of captivity before he, you know, was taken out of the scene. He, he told them from verse 11, he said, Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Can I pause there briefly? You see, the things that are presented to us, they are not too difficult. Why? Because Jesus, the Lord promised that he will not allow us to be tempted more than we are able to bear. So the things that are before us, the choices that are presented before us, they are not too difficult for, for us. Or beyond our reach. Verse 12 said, It is not up in the heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it 
and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and your heart so you may obey it. See, I said before you today, life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and causes. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. If you look at this account, Moses you know, um, um, numerated to the people what it expected, what is presented before them. And he told them, now choose life. The interesting thing is that he did not just say, here are the options. He said, here are the options, but choose this. Here are the options, but choose life. And he made them to understand the consequences of each of the choices that are presented before them. And you see, the same thing unto us. We have been given the freedom of choice. The Lord has given us the choice, you know, the, the ability to make our choices. But the thing is, for every choice we make, there are either blessing or negative consequences to experience. So the choice is ours. And here Moses made it clear that he has presented before them life and death, blessings and causes. And he told them, choose life that it might be well with you. Choose life that you might bless. And he goes further to, you know, to summarize what is presented before him. He said, for the Lord is your life. Invariably, he's telling them, choose the Lord. Can I also say the same thing to you this morning, to choose the Lord. Choose life. That verse, that verse um, 19 says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. I believe that that word is that promise that that word is coming to you fresh this morning choose life in every opportunity that is presented before you in every option that is set before you choose to follow the options that will lead to life choose to follow the options that will bring about all that the lord has given you for life choose the options that will put you on the path of the blessings and the promises of the Lord. You see, I have come to see that for every choice we make is either is aligning to the will of God for us, which tends to life, or is against the will of God for us, we will eventually lead us to the path of destruction. So in whatever option you are given, whatever opportunity that is presented to you to make a choice, think twice and choose life. Think twice and choose that which is in line with the will and purpose of God for your life. Choose that which will bring about the goodness of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. Choose that which will bring blessing to others. That will, even in your words, the words that you choose to speak, the Bible says, let our words be seasoned with salt, such that will impart grace to the hearer. Brothers and sisters, we have a choice. And the Lord is telling us this morning, choose 
life. And in Joshua chapter 24, from verse 14 to 18, you see, Joshua took over from Moses and at a point, he retreated the same thing to the people because of its very importance. In Joshua chapter 24, verse from verse 14, it says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors. Worship, throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if you are, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, listen to this. Joshua said, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us out of, who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua presented the same situation. He made them to understand, well, you, you, we have the gods of the Amorite where we live. We have the God, the God that we are serving, Euphrates River, which we have come to know. But choose to serve the Lord because the Lord is our life. He is the author of life. He has created us and given us the Bible as the manual to live in line with His will. Giving us examples of people that have lived before us. How they live, the consequences they experienced, they experienced. And giving us an opportunity to choose to follow the good examples that was left for us. You see, as if that is not enough, He sent Jesus to come to redeem us. He sent Jesus to come to, as people say this day, the great reset. That we might go back to his plan. That we might go back to serving him. That we might be presented with the clear choice to follow. Brothers and sisters, choose life. In John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6, he said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Jesus was you know, speaking here. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house has many rooms. If that was were not so, would I would that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you. To be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus also, one of his you know, uh, uh, last words before he went to the cross, he reminded the people, let not their heart be troubled that he will be living. And I believe that in the situation that the world is living now, the world is troubled. With the pandemic, with a lot of disaster happening, the world is troubled. With people betraying people, the world is troubled. With people not knowing what to believe this day, the word is trouble. And the word of the Lord I believe to us this morning is, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. And Jesus said, believe also in me. Believe in Jesus. And, at the last, and in that verse 16, he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the life. So, the word of God telling us to choose life. 
invariably telling us to choose Jesus. He is the way. He is the life. And he said, no one comes unto him that he will cast out. Can I say this again to us, brothers and sisters? Choose life that it might be well with you. Choose Jesus, because Jesus is the life. Amen. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Jesus is saying here again, He has come that we might have life and have it to the full. Brothers and sisters, choose life. Choose Jesus. Don't mind the options that are out there. You see, I believe the Lord gave us that freedom of choice so that we will choose ourselves to love Him. He doesn't want robots or people that will be forced into doing their thing. You know, imagine a, a, a couple professing that they love themselves and one of them is being forced to choose the other. Do you think that person will get the best from that person? From that other person? No. No. It will be, that means the person is walking contrary to his will. But the Lord, in the same way, did not want to force us. He led the option before us because he had created us with that freedom of choice, which I believe is a great thing. So that when we choose to follow him, we know that it is our choice. We know that we are following him because we know in him is life. When we choose to follow him, we know that he is trustworthy. He is faithful. What he promised to do, he will do. He walking, he's working with us to bring us to a place of fulfillment. As Jesus said in that uh, uh, John 14 that we read, he said that he is good, that in his father's heart there are many rooms. If not, he will say he's going to prepare a place and he will come back to take us. You see, his promises are yea and amen. And the same thing Moses told the people, what I'm telling you is not too difficult. But the Lord wants us to choose him over the options that are presented to us. Even in this troubled time, the Lord said, choose life. Let us not be deceived with, with the enticement of the word, with the promises of the word that seemingly, you know, sounds good. But the Lord himself is good. And he's encouraging us to choose life. Jesus said he came that we might have life and have it to the full. Will you not reach out to receive what Jesus has for you? Life to the full. So choose life. Paul was writing to the Colossian church in Colossian chapter 3. I read from verse 1 to 4. It says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is, sit is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Isn't that interesting? He said, if then we are risen with Christ, you know, this address specifically to Christian, but you see, if you are not yet a Christian, I believe you have an opportunity at this end of this, at the end of this message to make that choice, to choose life, to choose Jesus. It's, it's just a simple decision in the heart and praying a simple prayer to invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord, to be your Savior, to forgive you of your sins and accept you as His own. It's a simple prayer, but it comes from a decision in the heart. And Paul is writing here to the Christian, he says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. He said, Set your heart on things above. Set your heart on things that apply to life. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You see, when we choose life, we we'll set our heart on things that are in line with the life that we have chosen. Things that are of eternal value. Things that are of heavenly perspective. Things, not just things on this earth that come to deceive, to steal, to kill, or to destroy. But things that the Lord Jesus himself has delivered to us to bring us life and life to the full. So set your heart on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Isn't that interesting? That our life is now hidden with Christ 
in God. We are shielded. We are protected. Hallelujah. That's, that, that's a blessed experience. That's a blessed thing to know. That your life is hidden with Christ in God. He said, when Christ, who is your life? Brothers and sisters, Christ is our life. He came that we might have life. He came to redeem us from the fallen nature of humanity. And he's presenting it to us this day to choose life, to choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will say, how can I do this? I'll just say briefly. The first step to choosing life is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Make a decision, make a commitment to follow him. The next step is to get a Bible, study his word, know his promises for you, know the way he wants you to live so that you can experience the fullness of this great life he has called us to live. In the Bible, you will discover the promises of God, you will discover the blessings of God, you will discover his, his plans for you. You would even discover the, the, the tools and the, uh, and the uh, experiences he has laid down to counteract what the world is throwing at us. So that we at all times will choose life and follow his promises for us. Then the next thing you could do, get in touch with another Christian person or a church that believes the Bible completely to learn and to grow. To be encouraged in this journey. See, we are not traveling or going through life alone. We are there. There are brothers and sisters in the faith that believe the word, that trust in the word of the God. We have churches and organizations that have the word of God as their standard. Get in touch so that we will not, you will not travel this journey alone. But have someone there to encourage you, to support you, to pray with you. The Lord has called us to choose life. And, in his, and this life... He has called us to choose is full of blessings. It's full of fulfillment, I would say, because he has paid for it. The Bible said Jesus was bruised for our iniquity. He was punished for our transgression. And he, uh, he was bruised for our sins. He was punished for our transgression. The punishment that brought us peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. He paid the price for the life. He has invited us to choose. So, as I pray this morning, I just want you to open your heart. The Lord wants us in every of our of, of the op opportunities and option that is set before us to choose life, to choose that which will bring our body fulfillment of His blessings for us. Shall we pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, O oh God. Oh, you, we thank you for. Reminding us, O oh God, that you are our life. And this morning, as we make up of our, our as we make up our mind to choose life, Lord, we pray that you by your spirit will inspire us, will open up our eyes to see the options that are set before us to choose the one that lead to life, to choose the one that will lead to the fulfillment of your plans for our life in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak to that person, oh God, that it seems to be on a crossroad to make a choice, Lord, that they will hear your voice, leading them to choose the path that will lead to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that anything that comes against us to, to deceive us, anything that comes against us to hinder us from choosing life at every occasion. Lord, we resist them, we come against them in Jesus' name. Your word said that resist ye the devil and he will flee. Lord, we resist every temptation to choose differently. We release, we resist every advice from this world to make us to choose contrary to your plan for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. As you strengthen us, as you lead us, Lord, we will always choose life because your word said the Lord is our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And if you've not made the decision to follow Jesus right now, just decide on that and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I choose to follow you. I choose life. I choose you. I welcome you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Strengthen me, forgive me, and lead me in this part of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, welcome into the family of God. Try and get in touch. 
with the, with the church or with Hope Church. You are our leaders are there after the service so that we will walk with you, pray with you, and journey with you in this life that you have chosen. Bless God bless you. service. I hope you enjoyed the online service actually because I'm pretty sure it's already done. Anyways, my name is Noah. I'm a youth leader in Hope Church and I'm just going to share a little message with you guys that I was reading in my quiet time and encouraged me a lot. So I thought I'll have to encourage you guys as well with it. So I've recently been reading the book of Exodus and Exodus is when Moses, God appoints Moses to take the enslaved Israelites out of Egypt and I was just reading the part where Moses encounters the burning bush and God tells Moses that he needs to travel to Egypt, go before Pharaoh and demand to let my people go so that they can worship God in the desert. When he hears that God tells him to go into Egypt, he says this, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people 
of Israel out of Egypt. Sometimes God calls us to do something and our response is, but who am I? Like, I am just Noah. I am just whoever. Who am I to do this? Like, no. And I was reading a little bit further on and it says, but Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I can't do this because I'm not very good with my words. I never have been. And now, I'm not now, even though you've spoken to me, I get tongue tied and my words get tangled. That is amazing to me because he is someone who cannot speak in public, who gets tongue tied, who doesn't have the capability to talk well. And like that is a complete opposite person for the job. God appointed someone who needs to be able to speak well, talk in public, announce, be firm with Pharaoh and, and not get tongue tied. And God chose someone who's exactly the opposite from that. Isn't that amazing how like he chose someone who doesn't have the capability to do what God wanted him to do well, but God chose him anyways. And sometimes that's, that's us in our Christian walks. When God asks us to do something bold, like maybe talk to a person in church who's their first time here and you are, who am I to go talk to that person? Because I don't have the social capabilities to do that. Or, who am I to want to preach in church one day for a Sunday? Who am I a person to want to be part of a ministry team? Who am I to, to want to join a leadership team in a church? Who am I? I? I don't have the abilities for it. Sometimes God asks you to do something bold and, or even reach out to somebody and you're like, who am I to actually do this? Because I don't have the capabilities for this. But that's exactly the opposite of God. God chose someone who didn't have the capabilities to carry out his plan and he chose someone to, who's completely the opposite isn't that amazing and so after the moses says this so i get tongue-tied i can't speak well in public the lord replies with this who makes a person's mouth who decides whether people speak or do not speak hear or do not hear see or do not see is it not i the lord now go i will be with you as you speak and i will instruct you in what to say that to me is so encouraging that it's like Moses just told God that I'm, I can't do this I'm not the person for this am I I, I get tongue-tied I, I can't just talk in public but the Lord says who makes a person's mouth who decides who decides whether people speak or do not speak is it not I the Lord I will be with you that is so encouraging to me. I was just like over, overwhelmed with that blessing. I am with you as you speak and I will instruct you with what to say. That's amazing. Just God is in control. Isn't that amazing that, so you should never be discouraged when, when the situation around you isn't necessarily matching with your personality. But the Lord says that he will be with you and he will tell you what to say so yeah that's all i wanted to say and i hope you guys were encouraged and god bless thanks for joining our service today we hope you are encouraged and here are a few announcements for the week hope you at this meeting on zoom now every friday at 7 30 p.m message us for the link to join we're beginning the study of first, second, and third books of John over the next eight weeks in Connect. Join us on Wednesday on Zoom as we grow in God's Word together. If you'd like to give your tithes or offering online, the details are on the screen. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more details. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hope Church Ennis, for more hope from home. Thanks again for joining us and have a great week.